So Aaron and Steven, you were part of the uh, visual effects team on The Looming Tower, uh, which is a uh, mini series that uh, follows the lead up to 9-11. Obviously this is a show that's based on something that, uh, well, just about everybody alive has lived through. Uh, so there are certain expectations for uh, accuracy and things like that. I just wonder what your expectations were like going into it and what uh, for you guys were the biggest challenges uh, in your work? Sure. Well, like you said, these were, we were going to be showing events that everyone was familiar uh, with the news part of it and also what all these things look like. And um, so from early meetings, we knew that uh, every time we showed this stuff on screen and use visual effects to recreate it, um, obviously accuracy and visual fidelity were the number one priority. One of the one of the things that emphasize that need is that in a lot of these scenes, they're edited in such a way that they'll cut from one of our visual effect shots into archival footage or news footage from the actual event, so uh, people can see exactly how these structure buildings looked and how um, uh, the events that were portraying looked in actual news footage. So accuracy was uh, the primary concern, and also because. Um, just the nature of these events are are sensitive, and that we we didn't the goal was not to sensationalize or make anything look extra um, fantastic past the point of just historical accuracy. So that was always part of the conversation from pre-production through planning, and also it's just integral to the storytelling in the series itself. Um, you, you see that that a lot of these uh, events are shown. There's the lead up is shown, and then sometimes the aftermath is shown, and the, the series itself doesn't dwell on actual attacks or violence, and a lot of the discussions about how visual effects plays into that would sort of fall along those lines. Well, you're dealing with very uh, complicated and uh, at times dangerous things, you know, explosions and, and all that. Um, so, I mean, take us through a bit of uh, how you prepare for things like that, how the two of you work together and work with the showrunner and the directors in order to um, figure out what you need to shoot on set and what you need to finish um, in visual effects. Sure. Uh, well, since you bring up explosions, you, you can see in the, in the first episode, that at the end of the episode, you see um, there was a, in the story, uh, there was a, a truck off that was filled with explosives that was parked in front of the U.S. Embassy, and um, they detonated that truck, which caused the building to collapse. So, um, there was, they, the filmmakers knew early on that uh, this explosion moment, we would see it almost in a flash or very briefly, and that that would be the end of the episode, and that in episode two, we would see the aftermath. So in planning to show this explosion on screen, um, what we did is we, we wanted to see the car clearly uh, blowing up, so uh, we talked about how we could use a mix of real pyrotechnic elements and uh, digital stuff and which which parts we would do on digital and what we would do for real and what we decided to do is uh, we had a truck and we filled it with special effects or explosions and we filmed that at a separate location from the set on a basically a green screen out in the middle of nowhere and um, we the special effects department blew that uh, truck up so that you could see the parts of the car flying away and then when we composited it in that shot what we did digitally is create the like larger form we would simulate um, all the smoke and the shock wave and the, uh, the effect on the surrounding buildings. And that in the final shot, you see that very briefly before smoke sort of rushes at the camera and fills the frame because uh, the decision wasn't to dwell on any of the details in the models. Mm -hmm. Steven, can you give us some uh, perspective as visual effects producer uh, from, I mean, how you uh, go through one of those sequences? Sure. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like that, that sequence in particular, I actually uh, traveled to, it was filmed in Johannesburg, I actually traveled to Johannesburg for the prep of it. So I was there uh, with the line producer, um, directors, uh, and cinematographer, and we sort of, you know, talked through and fleshed out some of the preliminary conversations that Aaron was involved in here in New York. Um, and I was, you know, sort of there to represent the effects as eyes and ears and just kind of talk through, okay, now we're actually at the location. Is there anything different about the location itself and that, that hadn't been discussed, you know, about which photo reference? So we could go back here and, and so back in New York, do any previous that we needed to do and have a, have a better foundation for, um, 
for you know discussions leading up to the actual shoot. Um, you know, there's you know we talked a bit about the actual explosion itself. There's another shot in between the two shots of the explosion that we also worked on, which was um, the one of the terrorists that's running away from the bomb gets caught up in the blast, and you know they they had the guy rigged on a, a wire rig so he could get pulled away from camera and then land. So what we did in that shot, you know. You can't just like toss a camera or, or a man 20 feet and dump them onto concrete. They had a, a nice big uh, pad back there for them to land on. And of course, we removed that. So it kind of like you know, in terms of like how we how we find a balance between safety and what we can do practically and what visual effects can help with. Um, I think on the production side, there's always this cognizance. It's like yes, we want to get things in camera. We want to have the stuntman flying through the air, we want to have pieces of the truck blowing up, but you know, we have to make it safe for everyone. Well, to that point, I mean, what was the most difficult of, of you know, if you could pinpoint one particularly difficult visual effects sequence uh, from any of the 10 episodes in terms of practicality, in terms of planning, in terms of execution, could you uh, tell us what that is and, and take us through how you worked through it? I think the cold was the most involved in terms of just like, you know, planning through execution. Yeah. So um, in episode six, we see uh, we see the uh, Al Qaeda uh, an Al Qaeda cell of three guys get in a small fishing boat and they drive the fishing boat toward the USS Cole. We're portraying the 2000 bombing of uh, the USS Cole, and uh, we see that at the end of the episode. So the way that we filmed that uh, was. We went out in, in Morocco, we were shooting out in Morocco for a lot of the scenes that took place in the Middle East, the scene took place in Yemen. And we, found, we were out, off the coast, out on the water, uh, in a real fishing boat, and then we actually were able to use an actual Navy frigate from the Moroccan Navy. And we placed that boat out on the water for these scenes, and that boat would become the USS Cole in these shots. It was the basis for our CGI um, extension. So in that scene, the, the actual boat that we were filming was much smaller than the USS Cole, which was a, a, a missile destroyer. It was a much larger class of ship. Uh, so in filming that scene, of course, we're out on the water and it's complicated. And we had storyboarded the whole scene, which shots were shooting from behind the fishing boat, which shots were shooting from the deck of the Navy boat, and uh, how all this was going to play together, especially once CGI would make that boat much bigger in the shots. And we were covering it from drones, we were covering it from three different cameras out on the water. So um, what this took was a lot of previs where I, I, on set I had the model of the USS Cole and I was able to, as we were framing up shots, I would sort of show the filmmakers the previs and show how our shots are actually going to look different once the boat's much larger and which parts of the boat that we're seeing now are going to translate into which parts of the coal. And um, to sort of get the pace of that scene from all these different camera angles was a, uh, a bit of a challenge, but I think that using an actual boat and filming from boat to boat was made the scene in the end much more organic feeling compared to uh, the alternate plan was to just go full cgi for the uss Colt, which obviously when you're out shooting there it would have been easier to just shoot open water but uh going through the trouble of getting an actual giant boat out there and filming i think just made the shot so much more realistic and brought a lot of energy to the scene one of the other uh, things about this show is that it's set now 17 years in the past um, and even earlier for uh, for a lot of it when they're tracking Al-Qaeda. So some of it's like in the early, late 90s. Um, so it's a period show. Um, so, I mean, were there subtle ways that you had to use visual effects to kind of help convey the period, i.e. like taking out modern things or, you know what I mean? Like those kinds of subtle ways that you have to remove things in post? Times Square was actually a good example of that. There's um, there's a recreation of the FBI kind of staking out uh, the New Year's Eve celebrations uh, from the, the 1999 to 2000 millennium uh, New Year's ball drop. So, you know, in addition to doing sort of like heavier VFX work where we're duplicating crowds because we shot at Times Square, uh, and only had control of certain areas, so we, you know, we had our extras that we shot in tile all around. Um, we also had uh, reenactments, like we, we built a CGI uh, ball that we had dropping, and you see it reflected in the window when we're looking at one of the characters, and you see the ball dropping in the background. But then, 
you know, even subtler things. There's some scenes of the characters on top of roofs, and these are real roofs around Times Square. And, you know, so you see certain ads that, you know, certain billboards, we were, we were actually really lucky. There's a couple uh, musical revivals that were happening. Um, so there's, there's billboards for these musicals that were actually period accurate and they got to use. Then, of course, there's, there's billboards that are, like, obviously, like, modern LED flashing stuff or, you know, brands that, that wouldn't have been period accurate. So we had to go in and just do subtle things to hide, you know, hide the things that might have taken someone out of the scene. It's really the goal is to use VFX to support the action and just make sure as a viewer you're immersed and you're, you're buying into to what you're looking at. Yeah. The other thing was there's a lot of, they shot a lot in New York. Uh, a lot of scenes that played as New York were in New York, so we did a lot of uh, skyline changes because even, even in shots that weren't hero shots of the skyline, you wanted to make sure that there weren't obvious modern buildings in the background because the New York skyline is constantly changing. So that's a common uh, challenge that we come across with a lot of shows that are here. You guys have worked in both film and television, and I mean, this is basically kind of like a, a 10 hour film, but you are still uh, working on more or less a TV schedule. Um, did you have to work quickly? I mean, was there sort of a, a compressed timeline or did you, I mean, did you have to, were there things that you had to kind of rush through? I mean, did that add pressure to it? Um, yeah, you're, you're right in that this was definitely a TV schedule, uh, but I think what we did right on this show that we, that uh, it's not always possible to do is all the pre-planning. That even from before we started shooting episode one, we had the discussions about which big shots in episode nine needed to be visual effects. So we were able to get a good lead on those and start pre-visiting those and boiling down the amount of shots into like the key shots that could sell it. Because everybody knew that once post started, this was gonna go fast. So the filmmakers didn't have an appetite to shoot a million VF that shots. We knew the exact sort of wide shots we could boil it down to to sell the whole uh, scene in one shot. Yeah, and that was you know, being involved early on, being involved in the production was kind of key for that because, you know, sometimes we're brought on early, sometimes we're brought on during production, and we have a minimal amount of say in terms of how things are actually executed, and then oftentimes we're brought in just in post. And, um, you know, it's, it's still working with the team to figure out how we get these shots executed but we are painted into a little bit more of a box. So like being involved in prep and on Living Tower in particular, like I did feel like we were looked at as another department of the show rather than just that strictly vendor-client relationship. Um, and just really being able to like work with people as colleagues, I, I think was just helpful all around and just let us to work in, a, in that tight schedule. It certainly doesn't look rushed, so kudos on that. Um, so uh, you mentioned earlier about not wanting to sensationalize anything because of the uh, the gravity of the uh, of the story that you're telling. I wonder uh, when you're working on these visual effects um, and trying not to sensationalize these things. I mean, what is that discussion like? I mean, were there moments where you realized, oh, this is too much, kind of like a, a diehard movie, or you know, like how do you find that right balance there? I think our our main strategy that we went to again and again is looking at the photo reference. But when we were working on these scenes, we had we had so many photos printed out, pasted all over our offices, and we would constantly go back. Even even late into the phase when you're finishing the shots, you would look at the finished product and go back and make sure that things lined up and that you're not overdoing the scale of something or that things lined up. And it was. From the early phases, we were measuring out photos, trying to figure out how big, you know, certain things should be, and that just carried on all the way to we were finishing up and double checking, and we were adding details to these shots that, frankly, probably will go unnoticed for the most part, almost uh, for most viewers or all viewers. But it just was our guiding star to just make it look like the archival and make it cut with the real video because, I mean, in, in we sort of wanted a as much as we could take away our sort of artistic imprint on it besides like we wanted to put that into the the decision of what angle to shoot and the discussion with the filmmakers we would find the the artistry in what we're showing and then once we decided that it was just a matter of coming as close as we could to making it look like it was without without adding any extra beauty that was unwarranted 
Well, the show has certainly been uh, acclaimed for its accuracy and uh, its craft. Uh, it has also been talked about for Emmy consideration, uh, both uh, for the above the line and below the line, visual effects as well. Aaron, you're a three-time Emmy nominee for your work on Boardwalk Empire and Mildred Pierce. Uh, first of all, I mean, could you tell us a little bit about what that recognition meant? And do you have any advice for Steven if you guys should get nominated and perhaps win? Uh, <laughs> Well, don't get your hopes up. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. It was uh, it was an incredible honor uh, on those two projects to uh, to get that uh, Creative Arts Emmy nomination and to go out to LA and meet uh, meet other filmmakers and visual effects artists. It, it was it was huge, and um, yeah, our our work on those shows was similar similar to Looming Tower in that there was an emphasis every minute working on that that this needs to be of film quality of above and beyond anything that we'd see on a TV show that these shots would have to last and hold up to scrutiny years later that this wasn't churning through episodes of a certain show these are it's trying to create something that was a filmmaker's vision that would persist and I think with shows especially Boardwalk Empire that's a show that people will still watch and go back to um, yeah I'm, I'm proud of the detail and time we took to get those shots right and it was great to be recognized for that. Gentlemen, thank you both so much, and uh, congratulations on your work. It was a pleasure talking with you. Thanks. Nice to speak to you. Thank you. Have a good one.